In Game 2 of the Finals, Denver had no answer for Miami's offense, as they recorded an impressive 129 offensive rating. But in Game 3, the Nuggets adjusted their defense, and made a few key changes that helped them hold their opponent to just a measly 102, 27 points worse. It wasn't done by upping their aggression and forcing turnovers, but instead the opposite playing with a lot more discipline, not missing rotations, and properly executing their coverages to force the Heat into some really tough shots. In that game too, they got absolutely torched from three, giving up 17 made shots on almost 50% shooting, but in this one they held Miami to just 11 of 35, about 31%. It started with much sharper coverage against screening action. Bam and Vincent run a little two-man game with Jokic in drop trusting Jamal to navigate through the screen two different times to force a much tougher pull-up triple. This time it's Bruce Brown who's chasing Vincent away from the ball, and notice how none of Denver's off-ball guys jump out to the perimeter, letting Brown take that assignment one-on-one -on -one and get a solid contest. By trusting their primary defenders, it's much tougher for the Heat to create that numbers advantage. Jamal chases Struess over a screen and off the three-point line, where Jokic is camping in the paint, ready to take away an opportunity at a layup. When needed, their communication on switches was great. Robinson gets the step on Brown, and look at how seamlessly Gordon picks up the ball. A few extra passes result in no real advantage to attack, and the play ends with a much tougher moving three. Here's another one, where a flare screen effectively takes Jamal out of position, so Gordon again switches onto the ball with no hesitation closing off the paint and forcing a heavily contested floater. Their improved coverage against screens also applied to the pick and roll. Another way Miami was able to create a ton of high quality threes in game two was through Jimmy's dribble penetration, collapsing the defense on drives and spraying shooters. So the Nuggets made a key change. Instead of bringing multiple bodies into these actions, they just played it as a straight up 2v2 which allowed off-ball guys to stay home on shooters and close out with much more success. Gordon stays attached to Love just one pass away, and although MPJ's first instinct is to roam over and protect the rim, he doesn't fully commit as to not give up the kick out to Struess, instead forcing Jimmy into a much tougher look as a scorer. Here it is again, Gordon stays on Struess, and instead of sliding over to protect the nail, MPJ stays home on Love. And although Jamal gets beat, Jokic is back in that drop to protect the rim. When dropping back that far, Jokic is pretty confidently conceding the mid-range jumper if Jimmy wants to take it, as Porter again stays closer to the wing instead of rotating to the nail. Butler instead dumps it off to Bam on the roll, again getting stopped at the rim. They utilize these same principles against isolations. Martin looks to attack Brown in space, and not a single defender even thinks about offering help. And with no perimeter outlet, the result is a fallaway midi. This time it's Struess who goes to work against Gordon from the corner. Brown stunts from the wing, but not enough to where a kickout would create an open three. And the possession ends in a weird spinning layup attempt. Jimmy has the matchup he wants against Murray, but they leave him one on one trusting their man defenders to offer just enough resistance so that they don't have to rotate and play against Miami's constant ball movement. Here's another Jimmy isolation, this one against Christian Brown. With a few bumps and pivots, he's unable to create the separation he wants, and when he moves the ball to Bam, Jokic is right there to get a hand up on the jumper. Even when Jokic is the one defending Jimmy in space, they don't come over and double or aggressively rotate to get the ball out of his hands, trusting their big man to force him into an awkward driving angle going baseline before quickly peeling back to Bam to alter the floater. The only time they did bring extra bodies into isolations was if they felt the first line of defense was at risk of being blown by. Jimmy gets the step on Porter, so Murray attacks the ball to make him pick up his dribble, turning a potential layup into a turnaround fade. Here it is again, Porter gets caught on a flare screen, and when the ball gets to Love, Gordon stunts, which gives Jimmy an angle to attack off the catch. But Jamal again makes a play on the ball, this time forcing a turnover. Denver's paint defense was virtually flawless for most of the game, allowing just 34 points, 
and it's because of how good they are at rotating to not let shots get there. In the pick and roll, Jokic does a great job of forcing Lowry into an outside angle that takes him under the basket, and after kicking it out, Vincent actually beats a closeout, only for Brown to immediately slide into that lane, just completely shutting off the rim. Here's another Lowry pick and roll, where Jokic in that deep drop makes him pull back out instead of attacking downhill, meaning that when he kicks it to the wing, it's a much shorter closeout for Murray and a lower quality opportunity from deep. This one starts with Jimmy using a ball screen from Robinson to hunt out Reggie Jackson on a switch, but Reggie instead aggressively hedges. Butler uses open space near the middle to get into a drive, where Brown is ready to meet him at the nail, and Jokic is camping under the basket to make the finish more difficult. The reason it all works so well is because of how good the Nuggets are at rotating behind the play. Bam gets the ball in the middle with a numbers advantage, but Gordon slides up to take away his downhill momentum, while Brown rotates down to Jimmy in the dunker spot. Bam kicks it out to Martin, drawing a hard closeout, and Gordon's able to take away his drive, while also getting back to his man in the corner, and the possession devolves into a contested three-point shot. Because of these sharp rotations, they can occasionally send Jokic to the level of the screen and erase advantages. As the Heat get into dribble handoff action, Brown stays home on a shooter. But when Lowry finds Bam on a wide open dive to the cup, he sells out to the paint and makes a play on the ball. Here's another one where Robinson receiving a handoff pulls Jokic to the three point line, and Jamal seamlessly switches onto Bam leaving only Lowry unattended as he flashes to the nail for a mid-range jumper that gets blocked from behind. This also means that they can aggressively close out on shooters to not give up easy threes. They get caught miscommunicating on a ghost screen into flare action that leaves Struess wide open, so Jokic sells out to the perimeter while Jamal switches on to Bam with Gordon protecting the rim, and it's still a three-point shot, but not nearly as open. On this one, Vincent does a good job of getting to the paint, but with no real finishing angle, so he kicks it out to Lowry, which draws a hard closeout for Murray, and although he gets beat, Jokic quickly slides in front of him to turn away a drive, while Brown rotates to the dunker spot, and actually blocks Bam as he tries a layup. By running shooters off the line and selling out to protect the paint, the Heat were forced to either take really tough long-range jumpers or live in the mid-range, and although they have multiple guys who can capitalize on these looks, because of how efficient Denver is on the other end, it's really tough to match their production with longer twos and lower quality threes without some outlier shot making, which is why headed into game 4, they're going to have to make some adjustments to their offensive approach if they want to prevent the Nuggets from going up 3-1 with a chance to close out at home. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you thought of this game and what your predictions are for the rest of the series. As always, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.